Fake it till you make it. Have you heard that saying? Well, today we are going to fake it and we're going to make it. And the thing that we got to have to fake it is, and we all got it, this iron. Now, I don't use an iron on clothes because psh, why would I do that? Wait till you see what you can make, what you can fake with this iron. Let's Okay, so for this first one, you really got to use a stamp positioner. It's probably, I mean, if you can do it without a stamp positioner, I want to meet you because I think you're a magician. So I'm lining up my stamp onto the top of my Misty and my paper, everything's lined up so I can go ahead and ink up my stamp here. So I'm gonna be using all Catherine Pooler ink, surprise, 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 and I'm going in with my deep green first. Now I'm constantly looking at the label that my stamp came in so I can see the image. So I'm going in with the deep green, I'm putting it on the trees and wherever I think it needs to go. Constantly looking back at the label of the stamp set. By the way, it's called On the Lake by Penny Black. And then I'm going to go in with another color ink. This is called Apricot, Apricot, Potato, Potato. I'm going in. And here's the secret sauce. Water. H2O, baby. Give it a little mist on the stamp and then press it down. I am not using watercolored cardstock. This is just regular white cardstock. But one simple mist is all you need it's the secret sauce baby and in between i'm going to go ahead and clean it i'm showing you that i'm using some squeaky clean stamp cleaner from brutus monroe i don't even know if he still makes this anymore if he does i'll link it in the supply list i've had it forever it smells really good and it also conditions my stamp as i clean it but lots of times i just clean it with water as well i just had this on my desk i like how it smells so i'm using it but if you don't have it use water. So there's my little label that the stamp came into. So I can constantly refer to that so I can see, you know, what the image looks like. So now I'm going in with Lime Ricky, which is like this beautiful like sap green kind of color, if you will, going in and dabbing it, a little dab here, there, everywhere. I've always got a dirty microfiber cloth. Yes, it's dirty. What do you, you know, what do you want me to tell you? It's dirty. Again, I did a little misting of water there. Now I'm going in with another color of ink. You see where I'm going with this, right? I'm inking, spritzing, stamping, inking, spritzing, stamping. What color was this? This was called, I'm trying, Spiced. It's from their latest uh, ink collection. It was in the Brown family and it's, it's great. I love it. I finally found my doorknob for my ink uh, pressing. I love this little guy. Love my little doorknob. It helps with the pressure, making sure I'm getting good coverage of my ink pressing. So I'm going in, I see I've got a little gap right there, so I'll go in, pull up my Lime Ricky, and then just fill that in, and then just spritz, always the spritz. And, you know, so it's spritz, wait, it's stamp, spritz, wait a minute. It's ink, spritz, stamp, ink, spritz, stamp. I'm remembering that Legally Blonde movie that Reese Witherspoon was in when she was in the nail salon and she was like, you bend down, you pick up your thing. What was it? What was the little thing that they said? I can't remember it, but it's like coming to me. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, you're going to think I com I'm a complete idiot and you probably think that anyway, but any who moving on. So basically you are filling up the entire image with whatever colors that float your boat. That's really all there is doing it to it. Cleaning your stamp as you go. Use your finger, use a cotton swab, use a blending brush. If you're finding that there are harsh lines on your stamp, blend it out before you go ahead and spritz it and stamp it to remove any of those lines. And by the time you're done, you have this beautifully gorgeous image, all right? But we're gonna fake it. We wanna look like we watercolored the image because that's what this video is all about. We're gonna fake it. It is totally okay to fake this. So without moving my stamp, or my paper, everything is still in place. I'm gonna ink it up with some embossing ink. I'm using the embossing ink from WOW. I'm gonna go ahead and make sure all that ink transfers to my image. Again, it is very important not to move your stamp or your paper. You wanna make sure it's perfectly aligned. Then I've grabbed some paper from the trash. <laughs> I've folded it in half. I'm gonna use that crease as a funnel. That is some super fine clear embossing powder from WOW sprinkled that on 
and then I'll use that crease, like I said, as a funnel, funnel it back in the tube, and then I'm going to go ahead and heat set that. That is just trapping all of the color underneath the embossing powder, so that is all heat set. It is shiny. It is rough to the touch. If I held it up in the light, it would be completely shiny. So any ink that I put down, as long as it's not a permanent archival ink, is going to resist any of that uh, heat embossed image is what I'm trying to say. So all of that ink, that colored ink, we have basically trapped underneath the heat embossing. You got it? So we put the embossing ink over the top, we heat set it with clear embossing, so everything is trapped underneath. So all those colors are going to stay true. So I can go in and add a lake, which I did with that ink. I'm going in and adding a beautiful, like, fake sky. I mean, I'm sure that there are beautiful sunrises or sunsets that are pink and yellow. I've seen them in pictures. I have never been fortunate enough to see one in person, but they look beautiful. I want to be in one. I want to see one. So I'm going to put one on this card. So do whatever you want to do. Keep it white if you want. Don't add a lake. I guess you don't have to have a lake. That could have been a field. Whatever you want to do. It doesn't matter. This is your card. This is your project. Do what you will. Here's the magic, right? We got to get rid of that embossing powder. We don't want it shiny. We don't want it bumpy. It's totally not going to look like we watercolored it. So you're going to get your iron, all right? No steam, no water, no nothing. Just turn your iron on. Put your, put your card inside some copy paper. That's the same paper I used. Put a towel, a shirt, whatever down, and just iron that sucker off. You can see the, the wax, the heat emboss, the wax, whatever that is, is coming up on that copy paper. It just melted right off. All right, so when you lift that up, poof, all that shiny stuff from the heat embossed is gone. There's no shine. There's no nothing there. There's no more resist. It's gone. It's magic. So don't go and add a bunch of color over this image because if you do, you're covering it up because we removed the heat embossing. Looks like you watercolored it. Fake it till you make it. I love it. Let's do it again. But before I do, let me take a minute to thank today's video sponsor, Skillshare. You guys know how much I love them. I especially love Jane Davies. And this is a recent class I took of hers painting penguins. And I just love it. I love her unique way of watercoloring. And here's what I actually made from her class. Uh, but Skillshare is not just about watercolor. I'll show you in a minute. But these are all the things that I have painted over the last several months, incorporating various classes and various instructors, uh, all in the watercoloring genre. The first 1,000 people to use the link will get a one month free trial of Skillshare, all the information is in the description below. So be sure to check that out and see if it's your jam. But listen, I was curious, so I typed in the word cooking. Look at all these cooking classes, right? And you can do it by cuisine, what you're interested in. So good grief, go over to Skillshare, try my link, type in a keyword and go to town. This time we'll do it on a more simpler scale in case you don't have a stamp positioner. This is one of my favorites. It was an original background stamp from Katherine Pooler. It's still around. I love it. Still using my Misty, but I'm just inking it up with one color. So if you don't have a stamp positioner, you can probably do this. You just have to line it up one more time so you're able to heat emboss it. But I just ink this up with one color. I'm going to go ahead and clean off my stamp so I can go ahead and ink it up again with the embossing ink so we can go ahead and sprinkle on that clear embossing powder and heat set it because again we want to create basically a resist so we can add different colors to it. Uh, you can totally skip this step if you want and maybe to give it the look like you watercolored it, maybe you could spritz that stamp. You could ink it up with that pink ink and, and spritz it with some water and then stamp it down onto some watercolored paper. And that could give it the look like you watercolored it. That's a way to fake it. <laughs> you could do it that way. I would use watercolored paper if you're going to do that because you're going to be doing adding a lot of water. If you're adding a little bit of water, you don't have to use watercolored paper. But if you're adding a lot of watercolored paper, I do recommend watercolored paper. So that's a way to fake it. But we're using the iron here for faking, so we're not going to do that. But just in case, that's an option. 
All right, so we're gonna fake it here, and because we've created this heat embossing, we don't have to worry about muddy colors. Like, for instance, I love pink and yellow together, but they almost sit across from each other on the color wheel, and so if you mix the two colors together, they would create brown. But since I have created a resist by adding the embossing, I don't have to worry about that. So I can go ahead and add some yellow right over the top. If I was doing this with watercolors and that pink and that yellow met each other in a wet format, <laughs> they would probably turn brown and muddy. So you can do this a couple of different ways. You can create, you know, you can go and blend it on like I'm doing. Um, now this is yellow. I did go in and grab an orange. I was, I was actually playing around here. I was gonna create a kind of like a gradation of yellows and then I was like, whatever. I went to town, so um, <laughs> I grabbed apricot, apricot. Why do I do that? Just say one or the other, Laurel. Apricot. It sounds fancier. I don't know. Whatever. Then I just ended up taking it direct to paper. Just swing to that limoncello right over the top. And then I flicked on a lot of water flicks. A lot. And no, this is not watercolored paper. But since I did flicks and did not like saturate my whole entire paper with water, I was okay. If I was taking that paintbrush direct to my paper, I would have peeled my water up and messed my card up. But since I'm just doing little water droplets, I was okay. So I let that dry. And really you didn't have to because we're going to take the iron and P.S. ironing is a great way to flatten out your card. If you do a lot of heat embossing or watercoloring and you find that your card is warped, you can iron your card. You're welcome. So anyway, iron it up. Make sure you are protecting your work surface with a towel. That totally came from my dirty clothes hamper. I'm just going to go ahead and put it out there. Absolutely. This iron gets no use whatsoever either, so why not grab it for card making? It's certainly not ironing my clothes. So I have removed all of the shiny stuff from the card. Double check it, just tilt it in the light. If you see any shiny stuff still you know, on your card, just iron it some more and make sure it's all gone. And now it looks like I have hand painted or done some kind of calligraphy or whatever fancy schmancy stuff that I know I'm not talented enough to do, but I have faked it because I have done a little bit of stamping and some heat embossing and some resisting and grabbed my iron. So fake it till you make it. And by ironing off what you embossed, it looks like you hand painted this. I'm telling you, do it fake it. It's okay. I give you permission. Please do it. Let me know what you make in the comments below, and I'll see you next time for my next video. What's it going to be on? I do not know. What do you think it should be on?